Wednesday, July 8th, 2020, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Uh, back in 2002, that's when I started looking into gold. I bought uh, my first coins in April of that year, 2002. The reason why my wife and I decided to look into gold is that our pension, private pension, hadn't done very well uh, during the uh, bust after the dot-com bubble. And mind you, uh, our holdings weren't in speculative uh, internet stocks. They were just normal um, balance, supposedly, uh, equity holdings, geographically and sectorially uh, balanced. But uh, still, we thought, let's uh, get some gold, just see what happens. And uh, after that, of course, I started looking into uh, gold, into the uh, gold market, into the history of money. Uh, it really opened a Pandora's box for me to look into our corrupt and fragile fiat currency system. And then uh, in November of that year, 2002, Ben Bernanke, who was uh, at the time one of the governors of the Federal Reserve Board, uh, made a speech at the National Economist Club in Washington, D.C. on November 21st, 2002. And that was the famous helicopter speech. Uh, the title of his presentation was Deflation, Making Sure It Doesn't Happen Here. And I have to give him credit. He didn't actually say we're going to come out with helicopters and drop money. Uh, what he actually said uh, was this. And I'll read it to, to you. Uh, under fiscal policy, he said, each of the policy options I have discussed so far involves the Fed's acting on its own. In practice, the effectiveness of anti-deflation policy could be significantly enhanced by cooperation between the monetary and fiscal authorities. A broad-based tax cut, for example, accommodated by a program of open market purchases to alleviate any tendency for interest rates to increase would almost certainly be an effective stimulant to consumption and hence to prices. Even if households decided not to increase consumption, but instead rebalance their portfolios by using their extra cash to acquire real and financial assets, the resulting increase in asset values would lower the cost of capital and improve the balance sheet positions of potential borrowers. And here's where uh, people were alarmed uh, by this speech, even the mention of it. And he, he ends by saying, a money finance tax cut is essentially equivalent to Milton Friedman's famous helicopter drop of money. So just by mentioning that really uh, gave him uh, the fame of hel helicopter Ben helicopter Ben Bernanke to drop the cash. So uh, yesterday uh, I got an email from one of my long-term uh, viewers, subscribers uh, in Hong Kong with a photo of him holding 10,000 Hong Kong dollars. And this is what he said. Uh, you wouldn't believe the queues at the ATM terminals. Cheers, Mario. Uh, so he sent me this photo and then I, I wasn't aware that uh, they were doing a helicopter drop in Hong Kong. And this is what he said to me. Uh, yes, here in Hong Kong, the government has sent 10,000 Hong Kong dollars, approximately 1,300 US dollars to all Hong Kong residents who are 18 years uh, of age and older. They've just transferred it directly into our bank accounts and we're free to do as we wish with it. The cues at the cash machines are wild. So there you go. And uh, I corresponded with him a little more yesterday, and he said this is uh, probably the first of many, he thinks. And then you look at uh, what's happening in the States. We, ha we have had all these uh, stimulus checks as well, wh which are basically helicopter drops. And then there's a story out yesterday as well, Millions would miss out on second stimulus check with 40,000 income cap. Uh, 
the focus here should be uh, on another stimulus, not the income cap. And it says Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell sparked excitement on Monday when he suggested a second round of stimulus checks was on its way. But he also fueled speculation that this time there would be a lower income threshold for the cutoff. So even in the U.S., they're going to come with more. And uh, it's a little bit like QE for the financial markets. Once you start, you can't stop it because people uh, get used to it. It's like a drug. Even in the UK, they're talking now of uh, sending everyone a 500 a pound voucher and they're doing it through a voucher because they want people to spend it we're going to find out uh this afternoon whether that's going to be the case i think the chancellor of uh the exchequer sunak is going to make an amount announcement on uh the fiscal situation uh on some more plans and that that could be coming to the uk as well it will come in terms of vouchers though because they don't want people to save it they want people to spend it I've tried to explain to people, friends and family, why this would be so detrimental to the value of the currency. And the way I do it is, like, if you live on a normal uh, neighborhood and uh, seeing that a million pounds, for example, is very hard to come by, it takes years of hard work or whatever, or if you were a successful business person, uh, it, it doesn't come easy to earn a million pounds. I know a million pounds is not as much as it used to be 20, 30 years ago, but it's still quite a, a big sum, of course. And uh, what I say to them is, what if uh, everyone down your road or your street woke up one day and they had a million pounds in their bank account? What would that mean? Well, it would mean that a million pounds would not be as special and as difficult to come by, that million pounds wouldn't have as much value. Everyone would be out there buying things <laughs> and there wouldn't be enough things. Prices would go up, of course. It's the law of supply and demand. So it's the same thing here with a helicopter uh, drop. And, and, and those, of course, who uh, have been able to save uh, for the last few years, who have accumulated some savings in national currencies, for, uh, for example, they're going to feel like, wow, what was the point of me saving this? This is not, <laughs> it wasn't worth it, right? So I think it will change people's psychology. And that's why I think it's really dangerous. Uh, I tweeted out the photo uh, that my uh, viewer sent, uh, him holding the $10,000 uh, Hong Kong dollars. And uh, I said, looks like Bernanke's dream has come true in Hong Kong. Uh, $10,000 for anyone over 18. And I said, got gold. Because my viewer said, uh, Mario, you probably know what I'm going to do with it. And, and I do. He's going to buy some gold. Uh, someone else from Hong Kong tweeted uh, and, and said, I have received the, the 10000 today too. Uh, going to transfer all to silver. Um, someone actually made a comment. So fiat is valueless. Well, <laughs> yes, you can still buy gold and silver with those ten thousand uh, dollars. But uh, what I replied to that person was, "It will be if money for nothing becomes a habit." And that's why uh, you are seeing uh, all the national currencies, uh, all their uh, value versus gold go down and it's going to keep happening and, and i think also when savers realize that uh, <laughs> they've uh, been taken for a ride for saving this fiat uh, currency that can be uh, acquired uh, for nothing uh, given to you uh, through helicopter drops through the bernanke drop so there you go uh, this is a warning uh, it's starting Bernanke uh, Air is in operation. It started out in Hong Kong, and I think it's going to be a, a multinational operation. It, it's uh, going to be a very popular airline, Bernanke uh, Helicopter Air, I would say. So uh, I've been talking about some investments, some trades in the last few weeks, uh, over a month. I've been uh, putting some capital to work in the GDX 
and GDXJ ETFs. I've also uh, put some uh, money to work in Jim Sinclair's Tanzanian Royalty uh, Corporation, TRX. And why did I do that? Well, I've been following Jim Sinclair for many years since 2002, really. His blog was uh, running back then. And I, I had invested in his company before. And they've been doing a lot of testing uh, in Tanzania, uh, on the ground, uh, like studies, feasibility studies. But they actually started mining in the last month or so. And even though we're nowhere near the highs uh, that that stock made years ago, around 7 or even $10, I think it's a good speculation. So I just wanted to touch upon uh, these uh, three uh, trades, investments, whatever you want to call them first. And this is not advice. This is what I'm uh, doing. And uh, if you uh, took action on these, uh, you're probably fairly happy right now. But I think it's still quite early. Uh, GDX, uh, J yesterday closed up 2.58%, as you can see here. And uh, we made a, a recent high. I, I think uh, the next target is 52.50. Uh, that's the, the high um, of the last five years. So we are at two-year highs in the GDXJ. Uh, GDX as well, uh, we closed at 37.73, it's looking very good. That's a five-year high. These are uh, looking good momentum-wise. I would say you need to be, of course, a nimble uh, and depends on your time frame. If it's a short-term trade, uh, you need to decide when to get out. Uh, for TRX, uh, I'm in it for uh, the long haul, but as I said before, if it moves very aggressively, I could take a little bit of profit, who knows? But as you can see here, it's a perfect uh, bull flag and uh, we broke uh, the uh, top side of the flag uh, a few uh, days ago and you can see how it's accelerated here. I think the target, initial target here in the short term is gonna be 120 and then there's a key resistance at 149. Uh, but as I said, these are all volatile. Uh, Am I uh, putting all my savings in speculation like this? No, I don't have that much compared to uh, what I hold in physical gold and silver. I still think it's important to have precious metals as an insurance outside the system. You need to be really careful not to bet the house in these kinds of uh, investments. Not that I don't think they're going to go even higher, but uh, with the way uh, things are, the financial system, counterparty risk is another thing you need to consider. But uh, sometimes you've got to take some risk, of course. Um, so let's quickly look at the markets here. Um, it's 8.23 a.m. London. Um, yesterday wasn't a great day uh, for the stock market, of course. Uh, we saw the Dow drop uh, almost 400 points. Even the NASDAQ fell yesterday, which is unusual these days. It dropped uh, just under 1%. So, and precious metals did quite well. Gold made a new uh, nine-year high. We got up to uh, just below 1,800. I think 1,798 was the high. Silver underperformed. Right now, we're at 1,795. The high, 1797.40. So I think, uh, yeah, gold will uh, eventually break through 1800 here. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, who knows. I think once it does here in the spot price, we could see a lot of uh, buy stops. Uh, people who are short, usually they have a limit that uh, they don't want to lose. Uh, so they put a buy stop, not to buy and go long, but to close their position but it could trigger also uh, buy stops that initiate a long position. So uh, looking interesting gold, uh, silver is uh, performing a little better today. We're uh, at uh, 1831, up about six cents. Gold of course is down just about a, a dollar. 1840 uh, again is the uh, key level in, in silver and it's been the high uh, this morning or overnight. Uh, I think right now the powers that be are actually uh, keeping silver down because once silver goes through 1840, 
I think they won't be able to hold gold that much longer uh, below 1800. Uh, the Dow is up 44 points. The Dow future, S&P is up six. NASDAQ 100 futures up 43. Uh, sterling is up 0.15%, 125.60. Euro is up the same uh, in percentage terms at 112.90. And the dollar is unchanged versus the yen at 107.43. WTI crude, uh, $40.47, down about a third of a percent. And the 10 year yield is at 0.65 unchanged so i think uh the level around 0 0.6 0 0.62 is very important if we go below that uh that's not a good sign for the economy in general and why would you have also a, a stimulus people politicians talking about stimulus uh if the economy is doing well right so there you go uh yeah <laughs> there could be a helicopter flying over your neighborhood soon, and it will probably have Bernanke air on it. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Parlay, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.